Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and we're back with another video tutorial and we'll be having fun using particles again and we've used particles on previous video tutorials and if you want to check a beautiful uh, system uh, that uses particles for uh, Blender you should definitely check the first video tutorial here on this site, on this blog and that's pretty nice and the sad thing about particle systems is that let's say if you take 100 people and you kind of explain to them what a particle system is I'm pretty sure that 99 of them will tell you then okay we can build some sort of rain well building rain with a particle system is uh, nice and all but you could be and perhaps you should be more creative with your tools and you can definitely use a particle system in a lot of ways not just creating some sort of rain so we'll be using particles I'm hitting the delete key to erase the default cube and selecting delete and I'll hit shift A to add mess a circle and I'll set the number of vertices here for my circle from 32 to 8 you can see it right here and now that my circle is ready I'll move on here to the particles panel and I'll click the plus icon to create a particle system for my circle now first thing I'm going to do now is move down and go to the field weights and set the gravity from 1 down to 0 so we don't want any gravity for our particle system here what I'm also going to do is decrease the number of particles for my system from 1000 to 3000 and feel free to set them to the number you like and I'll also increase the lifetime I'll set it from 50 to 240 and that's enough to cover the entire duration for my animation so let's see what we got what else can we change of course we want the particles to be emitted from the vertices and I'll just hit play here to see how the particles are being emitted and the particles are emitted straight up but we don't want to have uh, just one row of particles here we want the particles to be emitted from the vertices and if I click here on the verts let's see how the particle system looks now and the particle system is shot along the normal using this value right here and if I hit play now you can see that the particles are emitted at the uh, vertices normal and the vertices normal are all pointing out so this is how our particle system looks right now what I actually want to do now is have the particles shot straight up so I'm going to set the normal value here from 1 to 0 we don't want the uh, normals to affect the particle speed a bit and we want to move our particles on the z-axis this way and so we'll give a starting speed using this value right here and we set the z from 0 to 2 okay now let's see how our particle system looks I'll hit play okay and that's pretty nice now I'll hit shift A and I'm going to add a vortex force field and as you can see here we have all sorts of force fields uh, but for this one, for this video tutorial, just to keep things simple we are going to use only vortex let's click the vortex to create a vortex force field here and I'll hit G and Z to move my vortex on the Z axis and I'm just giving my, particle, my particles here some space before being affected by the vortex and I'll right click my particle system, my circle here to select it move back to frame 1 and hit play to see how it looks so you can clearly see here how the vortex here affects the particles which is nice but let's see another way to affect the particle system I'll hit R and X while my vortex, my force field here is selected 
and I'll rotate my vortex along this, the x-axis for 90 degrees. Now you can see that these orange arrow points over here. And I'll hit G and X to move my vortex force field to the side. I'm moving it one unit, well exactly, minus one unit on the x-axis. Now I'm selecting the particle system again and the emitter, the circle, and let's take a look at the particle system now. So you can see how the vortex now affects the particle system and pretty much that's the whole idea behind this video tutorial is that you can use the force fields to guide your particles, to alter the flow of the particle system, to make them move pretty much exactly where you want them to. Now I'm selecting the vortex here and I'm hitting pause and I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate my vortex and X to move my copied object on the x-axis and I move it two units on the x-axis and what I'm going to do now is hit R and Z to rotate my force field on the z-axis and I'll rotate it at 180 degrees so we have one vortex pointing right here you can see the orange arrow and one vortex pointing in the opposite direction. Now let's see how it looks. I'm right clicking my emitter here to select it and my particle system. Click in here to move back to frame 1 and hit play. You can see how it looks now. Looks pretty interesting. But what we got here is that the uh, two force fields here are working together and therefore creating this effect and they both affect the particle system so let's change this a bit I'm right clicking the vortex on the right to select it and let's move over here at the physics settings and we have force field and vortex and I'm only going to change the uh, let's fiddle with the fall off a bit I'm going to change the maximum value click here to enable the maximum value and I'll set it to 0 0.5 ok and once I set it to 0 0.5 you can also see this little dotted circle around my vortex here and this is pretty much the circle that our particles will be affected once enter so I'll just increase the strength a bit I'll change the strength from 1 to 2 and apply the same settings to the second vortex here I'll click here and set the maximum to 0 0.5 and set the strength from 1 to 2 ok now I'm selecting the particle system again and uh, to be honest with you I've tried a lot of systems here and a lot of settings for my particle system to create a nice example for it and pretty much every time I worked on this I was getting you know different results and that is pretty pretty nice with it uh, I mean you can improvise you can create your own systems and you can create your own you can use your own force fields to affect the particle emission which is kind of nice so we have to go back and check how it looks and then press play and then move back we'll do it lots of times for this one and I'll hit play and you can now see that our particle now vortexes here are bending our particles a bit I'll hit the pause key now to stop and I'm right clicking the right vortex here to select it and I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad to switch to front perspective view and 5 to switch to front author view now what I'm going to do is duplicate this vortex here I hit shift D to create a duplicate and move it at about here ok and what I'm going to do for this one for the duplicate is change the maximum uh, value here for the fall off from 0 0.5 to 1.5 so we'll be having this vortex grabbing the particles as they move up and this one has a bigger radius for the fall off and this one will grab them again and apply the force field for the particle system 
OK. A one again. And I'm going to duplicate this one. Shift D and X to move it on the X axis. We want to create the same force field for the X axis here. And let's put it about here. And they're pretty symmetrical. And again, for this one, I'll hit R and Z to rotate it on the Z axis and rotate it for 180 degrees. So we have those two uh, vortex pointing this way and those two are, po are pointing at the opposite direction. So let's see how this one looks. I'm right clicking the emitter and the particle system to select it and moving back to frame 1 and I'll hit play. OK. And this is pretty much what I want. OK, I'm hitting pause again. And I'll move to the particle settings here. And moving down, and I'll change the render here from hello to line. And you can see how the line setting looks for our particles. And I'll just increase the head value here. Let's set it to 0 0.6. Now also increase the trail count, set it let's say to 4 and let's see how our particle system looks now. I'm moving back to frame 1 and hitting play. Ok, that's pretty nice, pretty interesting. And I'm hitting 5 for the user perspective view. And I now just want to frame, to position my camera, find an interesting angle for my camera. And once I'm satisfied, I'll hit Ctrl, Alt and 0 to position my camera. And I'll hold and I'll hit the right mouse button on this frame to select the camera. And let's change those values a bit for location and rotation at about here. OK, and move on the X, and I'll move my camera up, and let's see, let's move it a bit closer, I'll set the X to 6, and set the Y to minus 6, let's say, or minus 5, and I'll also set the Z value, let's set it to 5 to see how it looks. OK, and I'll decrease the X rotation here. Let's set it to 75. I'll add some rotation for the Y axis, just to create some interesting tilt effect here. And about here. And I'll set the Z rotation here. Let's set it to 50 or perhaps 47. OK. Now I'll move up a bit, just by a tiny bit. And again I'm framing my camera. Let's set it to 5.5. .5. And I'll also increase, well actually, bring the focal length down from 35 to 30. OK. And you can see the camera, you can see the particle system. And since we got our camera selected, I'm also going to uh, add some depth of field effect for my camera here. And if we check the limits here, the limits option, you can see we get this yellow cross here. And I'll now change the distance and move my yellow cross close to the particle system. You can see it's close to those loops right here. And let's set the, set the distance to 5.5. So the yellow point is where the camera is in full focus. You can see it right here. And as you can understand, we'll be using some, of course, some compositing for our particle system here. Now I'm right clicking the particle system to select it. And I'll just add the material to it. I'll click New. And I'll set the diffuse color to a nice bright orange. And about here, I'll bring the specular intensity down and I'll increase the emit value for the shading. I'll set it to 0 0.8. Okay, 
Now I'll hit zero on my remake keypad to switch to camera perspective view. And let's just render an image so we can see it. And you can see how it looks. Okay. Now I'm hitting the escape key. I'm going to split my 3D view here. Okay. And I'm going to change the top 3D view to node editor. Alright. Now I'm going to click here and select use nodes for the composing nodes. And we have a, a render layer. I'm going to move it to, this, to the side. And a composite. I'm going to move the composite to the side as well. And I'll hit Shift A to add output a viewer. Let's make our viewer slightly bigger and bring it to the side as well. And I'll also click Backdrop. Now, first of all, I'm going to hit Shift A again and add filter a glare node. And I'm going to connect the glare node. And of course, take the output for the glare node and make it an, an input for the viewer. And for the glare node here, uh, I'm going to set it to fog glow. And I'm going to bring the threshold down because we want our filter to be applied even on pixels that are not all that bright. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.2. Okay, let's set it to 0 0.15 and about there. And I like it. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate my glare node here. And I'm going to connect it as well. And I'm going to change this glare node from the, fo from the fog low to strakes. Okay, I'm going to change the strings amount from 4 to 5. And I'll just add some color modulation here. From 0 0.2 I'll set it to 0 0.6. Okay. I think it looks pretty nice. And since we've used the depth of field for the camera here, we can also hit Shift A and add filter a defocus node. Let's create our defocus node here. Let's connect it. And I'm also going to take the Z value from the, lander, from the render layers and put it here at the Z input for the defocus node. Okay, I'll deselect, I'll select use Z buffer because we are actually using a Z buffer here. And I'll deselect preview. Now all we have to do now for the defocus node to work, it changes the f-stop value. And I'm going to change it. Let's set it from 128, let's set it to 4. And you can clearly see that we have pretty much this part right here where the, where the yellow cross is. Pretty much this part right here is in focus while everything else is blurry and out of focus. So this looks pretty nice. I think we can move on. I'll hit Shift A and add distort and I'll add some lens distortion here. I'll also connect the lens distortion and I'll click fit and set the dispersion from 0 to 0 0.1. Okay. Let's add some distortion as well. Okay. I think it looks pretty nice and in order to have the uh, compositing nodes here affecting your actual render you should always take the output from the final compositing node and put it to the composite input. And I think we're good with it. Now let's, I'm right clicking my camera to select it. I'm going to move it a bit, hit zero on my remote keypad to switch to camera perspective view. And let's frame our camera a bit better. I'll move it closer on the Z-axis. Or excuse me. On the Y-axis. Minus 4.5. And move it down a bit. At 5. And I'm going to change the rotation value for the Z. Here at 48. Okay. I'm checking again the focal point here. 
and I'm going to move it slightly closer to the particle system. I'm selecting, I'm clicking this camera icon here to move to the camera object data. And let's increase the distance a bit. I think we're good at about there. Okay. Now let's render another image to see it. And you see how it looks. And again, this uh, this scene right here is an animation. You can always see how it looks and render an animation with it. I think it looks pretty interesting. And again, we've only used a vortex for force field to affect our particles here. You can use all sorts of uh, force fields for your particles. You can also use objects or par as particles and create some nice renders, either using Cycles or, or Blender Eternal. And let's add some color variation here for my particles. I'm selecting the emitter and the particle system. And moving here to the material panel. And under Diffuse, I'm going to click Ramp. And let's add a slight color variation here. I'm going to change this one from black to orange at about here and I'm also going to uh, set the alpha up to 1 and we have orange and white here you can see them both and let's now render an image to see how it looks and it looks pretty nice okay I'm just going to bring the distort down to zero and this is pretty much it this is the video tutorial feel free to experiment with particles you can create lots and lots of stuff with particles they're pretty interesting pretty fun to play with and as always before rendering you should uh, prepare the cast here for the particle system make sure you set the cast step from 10 to 1 and also don't forget to move back to frame 1 and hit bake. We have few particles, it's going to bake pretty fast and we're using Blender Eternal and particle systems only so it's going to be pretty fast to render as well. So enjoy, create your own versions, be creative and thanks for watching.